Welcome everybody, this is How to English, Teach and Learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. <laughs> really Slightly weird? odd intonation there, Gav. Yeah, sorry about that. I was trying to be a bit creative. Uh-huh. Is that a lead-in to this episode? Well, kind of, M. We are very fortunate to be introducing a technique which we haven't discussed yet on the show in detail. What would that be? We are going to talk about journaling. 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 You mean like keeping a journal? That is precisely what I mean. And what is a journal, Gav? According to eslactivity.org, who write all about this topic, journaling can take many forms. Journaling can be a way to explore feelings or to describe situations and daily events. It can be used to observe the world around you and make connections to your own life. In its simplest form, journaling is writing without any strict guidelines or rules. Is generally exploratory and not directive. With journaling, it doesn't call for a specific outcome or agenda. That is a comprehensive answer, Gav. So it's a bit like a diary, but it could be a bit more abstract, perhaps. It could take any form you wish. And it doesn't have to be every day. It could be any time you feel like it. I suppose that's the difference as well. Well, before we go any further, Em, let's introduce today's guest who will discuss her experience of journaling and also talk about shadowing. Do you know shadowing? Shadowing? I'm not sure. Is it like copying? It's kind of mimicking in order to improve your pronunciation, rhythm of English, stresses, etc. Right, so shadowing and journaling is the topic for our guest. So let me introduce our guest today, Gav. It's Earl Grey, and I should mention Earl Grey is my favourite tea, so I love the name. Earl Grey, and you can find Earl on Instagram at Earl Grey in Seoul, all one word, and you'll be inspired by her learning and teaching journey. She shares videos on how to express yourself in English, motivation talks, language quizzes, idioms and confusing words. And what's more, you can book online English lessons with Earl to improve your English skills. And Em, on her website, check out videos of her elegant and expressive dances accompanied with stories. They're absolutely delightful. Earl will be talking about her English learning journey. Hello, Gavana. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm truly honoured. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself to your listeners. I'm YJ, Korean, living in South Korea. But most people call me Earl because I gave myself the name Earl when I started posting about my English journey on Instagram. I started learning English just for fun, but now I'm studying English to teach people. I've actually considered what story would be best for the listeners. Focusing on the benefits of learning English or tips for learning English in a fun way. And I decided to focus on the changes from my journey. Because if you're currently learning English, you might need some motivation rather than tips for your mental health. But my tips are not boring, so if you're interested in how I enjoy learning English yourself, come over to my Instagram page and check it out. Even so, I'm going to tell you two things that I enjoy the most in my English journey. One is shadowing, and the other is journaling. I couldn't have improved my speaking skills without shadowing. This might be controversial, but when it comes to practicing pronunciation, I need the phonetic symbols all the time. Because I'm a visual learner, I need to see and read them. It gives me clarity and a clear vision. For this reason, I prepare a transcript for shadowing. As for journaling, it helps improve both writing and speaking skills. You can learn how to express your feelings and thoughts through writing. 
And if you read it aloud and record yourself, you can also improve your speaking skills. So I highly recommend shadowing journaling to language learners. I've studied English for seven years. It's quite a long time, but thankfully I've never gotten tired of English so far. Maybe I'm the luckiest person who's meant to love English because there was always something engaging about it at every stage. However, I've also experienced many frustrations in the process, like most language learners. And I'm still struggling with feeling ashamed when I make mistakes. In fact, until last year, I had just learned English on my own in quite a passive way. I don't mean that my way of studying was passive. I've always tried to study English in a creative way. Otherwise, I might have dropped out. I have a bad memory and usually get tired of something easily. But I felt that my life has changed for the better after speaking English. The more fluent I become, the closer I get to my true self. This might be a little deeper than you expected, but it's the best thing I've gained from English. Have you ever heard that learning another language is like awakening another character inside of you? I totally agree. I felt more comfortable and happier when speaking English. It feels liberating because I can be more honest about my feelings and thoughts. The Korean version of myself is quite boring. She doesn't enjoy joking and teasing friends, but is very polite and quite mature. But I don't think that's my true self because there's a lot of pressure to be the Korean version of me. Looking back, I often struggled with fitting myself into that mold. Sometimes, I think I was born in the wrong country. <laughs> Just kidding, I love Korea. But I wasn't very social, so I usually didn't initiate conversations, which means I had a little chance to share my thoughts and feelings with people. But since I started my English journey, I've needed to speak English as much as I can to improve my English skills. This has been like opening the gate to a new world for the true me. I've met a lot of good people and learned how to accept things and people as they are, including myself, and how to love myself and enjoy my life. These changes have made me think positively and step into a whole new world. I mean, I was hiding in my own world because I thought I wasn't good enough at everything. It was like having a victim mindset, wasn't it? I've learned that there are always fluctuations in life through the language learning process. And nobody's perfect, but imperfection isn't a flaw at all. And more importantly, I've realized that Positive mindset brings positive things. So that's my story. I've learned about life through my English journey. And that's why I can't get out of English. To my knowledge, we need to enjoy the learning process itself. Because learning another language is a long-term process. And there will be a lot of frustrations waiting for you. If you're running only for the goal, you might be exhausted and give up. So you need to find out which way works the best for you and figure out how to enjoy the journey itself. Thanks for listening to my journey and thanks again for having me on your podcast, Gavinam. Have a nice day. Fantastic. Earl, it was a pleasure and an honour for us too. Thank you so much for your contribution. It was very inspiring, very interesting, and we have lots to talk about, Gav. We absolutely do. I was also inspired by the many ideas that Earl shared with us. Focus on motivation, not tips. I think these days motivation is really key. Imagine after how many weeks, months, years of studying a language, how do you stay motivated, Em? It's not simply do this or do that. You have to have some real long-term goals and objectives to fulfill Otherwise, you're just doing day by day, which, which is not so encouraging for our students. I really appreciate how honest Earl was with her 
experiences telling us about her journey and I find it fascinating that she has another persona when she speaks English. A lot of our students can probably identify with that idea but how amazingly well expressed that was. So thank you very much, Earl, for that. It's really interesting. Having a second personality or another character, maybe you feel more liberated through another language. That's really interesting. It is. And on the topic of staying motivated through Engagement M, remember episodes 11 and 12? Setbacks and giving up, Gav? That's it. Revisit these shows if you need a little nudge in the right direction. And remember what Earl said about perfection. It's not necessary to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. It's a journey, isn't it? It's a journey, Gav. Enjoy the journey. And our students who have, and I'm using quotation marks, M, bad memories. How do they retain knowledge if they just don't have the equipment that other students have? Equipment? (laughs) The... um, brains (laughs) brains <laughs> right okay equipment um well Elle also said she has a bad memory so if she can do it you heard how amazing her english is then i think anybody can do it you just gotta find a method that works for you that is very true so find the way that works for you being creative for a language is key for many learners Varying your inputs reading writing listening and speaking in as many different contexts and through a variety of media will reduce learning fatigue. That is my tip. That's right, Gav. And find your learning style. As Earl mentioned, she's a visual learner. So as we said before, find out what works for you and what your learning style is. Yeah, she mentioned using phonetic symbols for pronunciation and making transcriptions. Great idea. It's really important to prepare well, especially if you're making videos to share with your followers. Yes, Gav, and finding a community through having an interest is really motivating. And to finally quote Earl, a positive mindset brings positive things. I like that a lot. That is inspiring. Thanks, Earl. Coming into the idea about journaling, I think we can maybe come back to shadowing another time. But I think today we're going to focus on the journaling. I love that journaling kind of sounds a bit like journey because I think that is a great topic to journal about and it could be a journey about travel, a literal journey, it could be a journey for English learning, it could be a journey about recovery, who knows, it's your journey but it is a nice thing to write about. It's reflecting on your transition from one place to another and hopefully you will see growth in not only yourself but also your ability to express yourself in English using a language. Absolutely. Em, that is a really good suggestion of a topic for journaling and we also looked at some of the benefits. There must be more benefits that we can get from journaling, surely? Journaling can help reveal areas of vocabulary that are weak or missing in a student's mental database. Explain that, please. That was very technical, Em. If you're writing about a holiday or a a TV programme and you write the sentence and you find you can't finish it because you haven't got the words you need, then you're going to look those words up. You're going to learn a new word. You're going to expand your vocabulary. Em, so do you mean you're going to set a topic for your students to write about, maybe on the topic of climate crisis, and the student has to write 200 words for you by next week? No, Gav, I don't think that really is journaling, as Earl Grey described. I think journaling is much freer, more flexible. Your students, if you decide to encourage them, would choose their topic, would go anywhere they wanted with it. It could be any length, any style. I think there are no real guidelines and you definitely wouldn't set it with a deadline, I don't think. Well, maybe you could give them a week to come back with something that they've journaled and if they want to share it, they may not want to, but then it would be more of a sharing of ideas and different journals. That's my idea of what journaling is anyway. I think that sounds much more freer than maybe the kind of written tasks that teachers usually set their students. 
We will come back to just how the teacher will deal with corrections for journaling a bit later. And coming back to what you said about a personal journey, and it is very individual, I think this makes the vocabulary very personal. And in that way, it increases the retention of that vocabulary because it's important to the students. I absolutely agree. And it's great because it can... Journaling can take the form of any style of writing. So if one day you feel like writing an article style piece, like something from a newspaper, you can. And then the next day could be a recipe. It could be anything. And then you're bringing a lot of different skills together. It could be a list form or it could be advice. It could be observational, creative writing. It is very broad. So let's bring it even closer to our ESL context, M. Yeah, Gav, how do we encourage our students to journal? I guess we could show them some examples of our own journals or something that we find online. Very good. Famous people's journals, perhaps. Journals we like ourselves. Yeah, I think examples are very good to inspire. That always helps. You may encourage your students just to write down some observations of the day or the week and see if it takes them anywhere, or perhaps like a diary. Describing routines, maybe something that they do regularly. How do you put that down in words? Even giving instructions, how to do something. As you mentioned, writing a recipe. Everybody knows a recipe. Maybe you've got a family recipe that you want to just get down on paper. You can think about the future, what your goals are, where you want to be in 10 years' time. And also, from a language point of view, what your goals are also. And describing those specific actions that will lead to achieving your goals. Nice, Gav. Visualisation on the page. How are you going to get there? Like a step-by-step guide. Which I think we're all doing these days. We're all taking a bit of time and thinking about the future, thinking about what we want to achieve in our lives, which goals will probably take us there. And again, just writing it down is going to really help you focus on them. Because a lot of the time you're just having these thoughts, they come in and they go out and you're not really able to remember them. So if you journal it, I think it's a great way of recording it and you can look back and reflect on it a bit more. And possibly update those notes and think, all right, that didn't work or maybe I could change this plan. That's right. And make sure as a teacher you encourage... True free writing. True free writing. Where the students write about their first thoughts, the fresh ideas that come to their mind. They don't get bogged down with the language or the form. They are just writing directly from their mind to the page in a free way. They shouldn't worry about making mistakes. Absolutely not. But they can go back over the page, back over their writing and just correct any errors they find. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And possibly ask the teacher later if they have any suggestions. Yeah. And also on the eslactivity.org website, you can find a great list of ideas for journaling. Em, let's have a look at some of those suggestions. Let me begin. Try writing about something you do well. Em, what do you do well? Packing. I'm really good at packing. Actually, now I'm starting to think about packing. I could write you a great list of tips, Gav. Packing a suitcase, do you mean? Yeah, holiday packing. I've got so much to say about it. Have you? Just give us some of the highlights that you might expand in your writing task. Think ahead about what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be going. Look at what you've put out to take Is it going to work for those events, those activities? If you can't see an outfit that works for that event, get rid of it. You don't need it. Mix and match. A scarf could be a wrap. It could be a hair towel. It could be so many things. It could be a skirt. So use things more than once. Multi-purpose accessories and clothing. I like that. Variety of styles. So elegant, evening, some maybe casual stuff, but just get a variety of things. I'm going to stop there, Gav, because I could just keep going. It was absolutely fascinating. When you said packing, and I started thinking about packing a suitcase, I was thinking folding, maybe rolling. 
kind of slipping things into the corners just to make sure you yeah. get everything there. But you were way more thoughtful than I ever could be. Oh, uh, what you've said is also really relevant. Just empty space, fill those empty spaces. Rolling, folding, it's a debate that goes on. It will go on for eternity. So I could probably write 10,000 words just on that topic easily. I can believe it. The next idea, Gav, is to name one thing you don't like about yourself. Would you like to share with the followers some of your thoughts? I think one thing I don't like about myself would be I'm a bit messy sometimes and I don't tidy up as well as I should. Mm, What could you journal about that then? I've just started thinking about packing now and how organised you are when you put things into a suitcase. Maybe I should think about the world as my suitcase. How can I organise this big space around me to put things in the right place? I'm already starting to construct some sentences. I've got some phrases like organise, tidy, fold, place, put back, put away... So maybe you could start that sentence with, I need to, I should do more, blah, blah, blah. Why don't I? You could argue either way. I think that would be interesting. What are the benefits of being messy? Sometimes it's good. It is good sometimes because I might forget that I've got my favourite baseball cap in the cupboard. And if I don't take it out of the cupboard and leave it on the side, I might forget to wear it. Yeah, I can accept that as an argument. I don't agree, but yeah, why not? It could be an interesting piece to argue both sides. Another topic might be, what's a happy memory that you have from your childhood? Oh, that's a really good one. And already I could write loads about it. Just Christmas morning, waiting for my mum and dad to wake up with my sister and all the things we would be hoping for and excited and all these, yeah, adjectives come to mind. Apprehension, excitement. It's just this amazing memory. So I would love to write that down and maybe even give it to my sister. That would be nice. That's adorable. You could put that into a Christmas card and it could be a little gift. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good one. Okay, Gav, tell me about something that makes you angry. I get quite angry when I accidentally delete the podcast. (gasps) Oh dear. The entire episode's just gone and I say, um, Em, remember we talked about that topic? (laughs) Do you want to talk about it again? Oh, it has happened. So that would be a really good challenge for you to describe all the processes that you go through and the way that you edit and where the documents are and how you transfer. I don't even know if these are the right words, but all these technical things that you do, you know you do them, but can you actually describe, write about them? Do you know the words for everything? That is a really good challenge for me. And also, I could possibly write a guide for others on how to avoid making mistakes that they might make when creating a podcast. Absolutely. You never know. It could lead to making a YouTube video. You could be the next big influencer. Where it ends is up to you. Mm. And finally, Em, how about this topic for your journaling? What do you spend time doing when you're not teaching? Lots of things. Again, a full page of notes already comes to mind. Walking exercising, reading, watching TV. I could tell you all about the last episode of a series I'm watching. I could tell you about the plot of the book I'm reading. I could tell you how my exercise is going. I could tell you what I made for dinner. I could just write and write and write. These all sound like really interesting topics. And Em, I would love to read some of your writing sometime. Yeah. Maybe you could post them online. Create your own little website with some of your ideas, as I know Earl Grey has done. So journaling could also become blogging. Very good. You could create your own WordPress site and upload all of your writing there. And I'm sure people would enjoy reading everything you've got to share. And these are just a few ideas. So I'm sure all the followers are inspired now and are coming up with their own ideas for journaling as well. But we haven't talked about... Correction? Correction. 
What should we do as teachers? Should we have a look at the student's writing and say, it's a nice piece of journaling, but there are a few spelling mistakes here. There's a few grammatical errors. Your sentence structure is a bit off. Yeah, I think so. I think if you do make it part of your course, then the students need to understand that it is a text that needs to be looked at. Of course, if it's a private thing, then no, it's not your business as a teacher to be reading it. Um, But if you make it clear to the students at the beginning, if you like this idea and you want correction, I think it would be helpful. So check with the students first. What do they expect when they show their journaling to you? Yeah, of course, they could be writing it by hand. But if they're writing it on the computer, you could just suggest that they do it in a program that has an autocorrect or a spelling checker, just so that then at least there's some guidance. If they like typing on a keyboard, that is. But when I think of journaling, I think of handwriting on a piece of paper. It's a quite intimate experience for me. Mm, Me too, Gav. But maybe we're a slightly older generation. Are you saying we're dinosaurs, Em? No, Gav, I wouldn't go that far. I think about handwriting too, but I guess you could do it on a computer. You can do it as an audio thing that you record first. It could be a video, journal. I suppose there is some creativity within journaling. I think it's limitless, M. And as Earl mentioned, if you have written it, you might want to read it aloud and practice your pronunciation. Great tip. Gav, are you ready for... Learn a word. And this week's word, M, is several words. Learn a words. That's it. I visited merriamwebster.com. Words at play, surprising, uncommon words. And I've picked a few that I thought I might test you on, M. Love a test, Gav. Every time, love a test. Go for it. I'm going to tell you the word and you're going to tell me what it means. Okay. The first word is biblioclept. Oh my goodness. Well, biblio is something to do with books. Like bibliotech is a library. So what was it? Biblioclept. Somebody who steals books? Absolutely correct. Oh wow, I was thinking kleptomania. So put them together, steals books. You got it. And that is not a common word. To be honest, I've never heard it before. I'm not sure it's even an everyday word, but it is a nice (laughs) word, putting together those two known words. That is a very niche theft preference. Yes, but I can imagine people want to steal books because books are amazing. No, Gav, stealing's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Our next word, M, is... Meldrop. I've heard this somewhere. Meldrop. Huh. Should I guess? Just guess. Meldrop. Is it something to do with sound? It's not. Oh. It's a drop of mucus at the nose. Oh dear. Okay, yeah. It could be caused by coldness or something else. You mean it's a drip on the end of your nose or you mean it's at the back of your throat like nasal drip? It's a drop of mucus at the nose. Oh, Okay, so you'd need a tissue if you've got a mel drop. A mel drop? Singular? To have mel drop sounds weird. I guess it's countable, but again, I've never heard that word, but it's a beautiful word. It is. What's an octothorpe? Octothorpe. Octothorpe. I suppose it's something to do with eight, because oct is eight, but thorpe? I've never heard thorpe as an ending. Is it another word for something with eight legs? It isn't, but it is an eight kind of sided or pointed symbol on your keyboard. Have a quick look. See if you can see any pointy bits. Is it the little star thing? No, it's not. It's another word for hashtag or hash sign. Oh, because it's got eight ends to it. Made of four lines. Okay. Wow. Octothorpe. It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. I can see why it was dropped for hashtag or hash sign. Yeah, Octothorpe How to English Pod. Mmm, Octothorpe Call English Podcast. Yeah, I think hashtag's easier. I've just looked and it's also another way to write a pound sign, which I didn't know. Yeah, it's the same symbol. I'm going to give you another word. Norsient. Norsient. 
Nauseant. Something to do with nautical? Something of the sea? It's not, but keep thinking. Vomit. Something to do with vomit. Nauseous. Nauseant. Oh, yes, it's an agent that induces nausea. Oh, okay. What might that be for you, Em? <laughs> Blue cheese mm. would be a nauseant for me. So you look at it and you're like, mm, don't yeah. think I can look at that thing because it's making me feel sick. That's right. Give me more, Gav. I'm enjoying this. Agilast. 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 I have absolutely no idea. Em, you're not laughing at this word. It's a description of a person who is clearly not finding the situation funny. So you would say that person is an agilast? A person who never laughs. Interesting. I'm definitely not an agilast. I love laughing. Laughing's fun. Octothorpe laughing is fun. I like that. You should journal on that one. But we don't want to finish on a negative. So if we change this word into gelastic, we are arousing or provoking laughter. Gelastic. I like that word. That's lovely. That's like a combination of jelly and elastic. Gelastic. So the film was so gelastic, I could barely catch my breath between laughing. I was rolling in the aisles. That's a much better way to end, Gav, with something positive. I am going to chuckle away the rest of the day. And if you also had a chuckle at Gavin M's show, don't forget to visit our coffee page. Links in the show notes to show your thanks and gratitude for the show. Thank you and wish you adieu. My French isn't great, but I think that means bye. Bye. Bye.